Yeah. I mean, guys. I mean, I, I'll I'll still do I'll still do this channel if you want me to. I mean, genuinely, I will still, you know, bring out content if you want me to. It's not even a it's not even at the point anymore though where it's like you can get mad or you can rage. It's just the same old shit, man. It's honestly so tiring. Like 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 transparently, like it's just it's so tiring every single fucking year. I I'm not going to I'm not going to even like scream about it anymore or you know whatever you guys want me to do. Um Team's playing with zero zero fight right now. Um, one night they they swing the bats really well. The other nights, um, you know, they 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 pitch well. Tonight, tonight they pitched really well, but then they can't fucking hit. If you were to tell me, if I were to ask you guys one area to pinpoint the problem, where would you say? Think about this from a holistic perspective. All these years. Okay. All these years, where's the problem? Where have I kept telling you guys is the problem? Do you guys know the answer to that? Cause, cause we can do this and we'll, we'll talk about campy's night. I thought he was great at the plate, not great behind the plate. We'll talk, we'll talk about that. Um, there you go. There you go. It's the general manager. Um, no, it's, it's AJ, but it is what it is. Okay. I think, you know, so obviously we don't, it's so brutal that Peter Seidler left us. Um, and there's a report that, you know, transparently the money, uh, is definitely less because, uh, Seidler is gone. Anyways, let's talk about this one. Oh, man. This fucking team, bro. Holy shit. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm kind of lost for words tonight. I got to really think about it. Because um, there's no real way to defend what we've seen so far. Currently, eight games in. Eight games in. This team just isn't a good baseball team. Uh, this is a team that's going to be a 78-win baseball team at best with a lot of these great names. This is who this baseball team is, at least thus far. Welcome, everybody, to the San Diego Padres Hogwatch postgame show. My name is Born AK Hog. In case you are new to the channel, please smash that like and subscribe button. Please do not jump off your balcony. Just spend some time and enjoy some copium with us on the San Diego Padres Hog watch post game show all right guys the san diego padres lose five to two they actually out hit the st louis cardinals today nine to six and let me tell you and let me tell you they did not do anything well today except you darvish you darvish has been the only consistent okay you darvish has been the only consistent san diego padre all year long that's the truth. That is the simple, the cold, the freaking cold hard facts. Let me bring this mic even closer to me so I can, you know, so I can just sit back in my chair and relax. Let me do it like this. Okay, let me do it like this. <laughs> Big Dave, you want me to start singing that Adele already? So, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you Darvish today. Let's start with the good. Uh, he was freaking phenomenal. Uh, he was freaking phenomenal. I know Darvish made that you know mistake uh, late in that game. But if you were to tell me that you Darvish were to go through seven innings and only allowed three runs today, guys, that is a great outing from Daddy Darvish. I mean, that is a fantastic outing from Daddy Darvish today. A great outing. Okay, so that is uh, not the problem. His splitter looked great. His fastball looked good. This is the oldest guy in our rotation by six years, okay? And he is by far the best pitcher. Now, we'll see how the Dylan C stuff unfolds, but you Darvish is by far and away the best pitcher in this rotation. 
And he's 37. And he's 30 fucking seven. So, guys, we're going to spend some time. And here's the U Darvish. Guys, let's just get the U Darvish top hogs out the way in the chat right now. Because there is no doubt that U Darvish is the top hog of the night. I know there's an honorable mention for Campy. But we're going to tell you why he wasn't in a little bit. Guys, if you want to call into the show as well. Please join the San Diego Padres Discord. I just put the link in the chat. What you can do is you can join the voice channel part of the channel, and it's free to join, and we'll probably have people entering later in the show. All right, guys. The Padres lose 5-2, to two, and, and, and the takeaways, number one, is that this team has incredible flaws so far to start the year. Number one is inconsistencies. One of my biggest worries is that they would be, you know, matching uh, one thing good one night, one thing bad the other night. Last night, what did they get? Last night, they got nothing really good, to be quite frank with you. But in the Giants game, they got fantastic offense. Tonight, they got fantastic starting pitching, and they got pathetic offense. It, it, it's that simple. And when toddy has been hitting his homers, they've all been via the solo fashion guys take a look at what the Dodgers are doing and Mookie Betts and those guys obviously we aren't going to be the Dodgers but this team needs to be better from an offensive perspective but if you were to ask me what the biggest worry of this Padre team right now to be quite frank with you I would have no idea how to answer that question there are a lot of worries with this team and my that is why my general concern is that this team may just not be good this team may just not be good I mean, it's that simple. Now, I want to talk about a few things from an offensive perspective. I want to talk about a few things from an offensive perspective. And I saw Sky bring this up in the Adam Glick uh, watch party. Shout out, Adam. Shout out, DSG. For those who aren't watching the Padres, they're saying, Hog, look at Fernando Tatis Jr. stats, right? Fernando Tatis Jr. is hitting 323. He has an OPS of about 1,000. Guys, watch the at-bats. Watch the at-bats. They aren't good, um, to say the least. Agree that the big dog pitchers be better. The lineup feels weird. The quality of ABs of Tatis and Manny right now don't look great. They don't look great. Uh, by the way, guys, I just won a thousand dollar bet. Uh, holy shit! Holy shit! I'm sorry. That's why I'm kind of distracted right now. Um, guys, 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 guys. You guys, you guys want to see it? Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. I'm him. I'm him. All right. I know I don't want to spend too much time on this. But also, also, Manny Machado's at-bats are absolutely pathetic. Machado's at-bats are absolutely fucking pathetic. Bro, bro, I just want a thousand dollar bet. I just want a thousand dollar bet. Um, Adam Glick, if you're watching, I told you I don't fucking miss when it comes to the NBA. You guys better chase me. You guys better chase me. I don't miss. Take a look, ladies and gentlemen. Five hundred dollars to win. Eleven hundred dollars. The Golden State Warriors winning and the Sacramento Kings winning. Bang, 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 bang. Bang, 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 bang. I tried to tell you. I tried to tell you. That just made my night. All right. Anyways. Uh, anyways. We'll, 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 I know you guys aren't here to see that. Um. Nine hits, okay? Nine fucking hits to two runs. Situational hitting is so awful. Also, they have a lot 
of opportunities where they let runners just hang tight. It's that simple. I mean, the fourth inning, Xander Bogarts. I mean, who do you want to start on? I mean, who do you want to start on? Do you want to start on Xander Bogarts? Do you want to start on Manny Machado? Who do you want to start on? Like Xander Bogarts, that contract looks looks fucking awful. I mean, that, that, it all looks so bad. It all looks so bad. You're down like 3K. I don't know, man. If you want to check that checkings account, I would say otherwise. <laughs> this team never goes on any streaks. They aren't consistent. The stars aren't consistent. The consistency starts with the stars. Okay. Bogarts just doesn't look good as a Padre, and you have 10 more years of it. Uh, you want to start with him? It's just, it's just, it's just not good. It's just, he, he just doesn't look good. Does does Zan, does the Xander Bogarts contract? have a chance to be the worst contract in franchise history, and that is with the Eric Cosmer contract. How is that Xander Bogart's contract looking? <laughs> Guys, this, this, the, the window is closed, okay? The window's fucking closed. I don't know what you want me to say. This team isn't getting any better. When Peter Seidler passed away, their finances have tremendously been fucked on. That is the harsh reality. All of the spending was coming from Seidler. God bless his soul, but he's not with us anymore. He's not with us anymore. There's a reason why they shed $100 million in payroll. The window isn't getting any bigger. The window is not getting any bigger. Even if this team sneaks in and is an 86-win baseball team, at the best-case scenario, the window isn't getting bigger. The only thing that's getting bigger are all of these contracts. Are all of these contracts? At least Hosmer was clutch here and there. Take a look. And you want to pay Ha Sung Kim? This is why they need to trade Kim. Enough crying? Fuck off, man. It's bullshit. How are you so okay with this? How are you so okay with this? Ugh, I'm so done with AJ, bro. I've been done with him for five years. Every year I get older on this channel, it's the same old bullshit, bro. It's the same old bullshit. It's the same old bullshit, bro. It's the same thing. Take a look at the top four. How much money is tied to that? You want to know? It's over a billion dollars. It's over a billion freaking dollars. No, 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 no. That is not a mistake. It is over one billion dollars. Okay? Like, and it's inconsistent, man. Like, that is that is the brutal thing. It's inconsistent. They haven't been getting much from Kim. Luis Campusano, let's start with him, okay? Really good night at the plate, okay? There is no doubt that Luis Campusano is going to be a really good hitter. His defense, on the other hand, he sold 
for the team in that eighth inning or seventh when he didn't step on home plate. That was brutal. Um, He is going to be a DH when Ethan Salas is ready. So I'm not worried. I think Campy is going to be a Padre for a very, very, very long time. We pay. You, you guys want to know the reality? I'm going to show you something, all right? Listen to this. We paid $280 million to a singles hitter who will hit 270. Dude, dude, we paid $280 million to a guy who hit singles who won't even hit 300. We're so fucked. We're so fucked. We're so fucked. We're so fucked. What? What do you what do you what do you want me to talk about the Tati stuff? We can't blame Bob Mike Schill, is it Hog? Bro, the answer is freaking Preller. You know this. You know this. Chad, let's get a quick roll call. Where is everybody tuning in from? Where is everybody tuning in from? And by the way, if I'm Bogarts, I regret signing here. He should have went to the... I just regret signing here. Arise is literally an upgraded Bogarts, bro. It's ridiculous. Captain, thank you so much for the five. Uh, JD, thanks for the two. We can't blame Bob anymore. Sorry, guys. I will get to all your super chats. Donations answered. Fuji, Toddy got a hit and thought it was a pop-up. I'm going to get into Fernando in a second here. Um, thank you so much for the five captain Kogan. Again, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe to the Hogwarts. We go live after every single San Diego Padres game tonight. The DSG went live and Adam Glick went live. So guys, we had an absolutely loaded slate tonight. I don't know if you guys missed it tonight before the game at 6 PM. It will be live again tomorrow. We'll have the divine sports gospel pregame show right here on the Hogwatch. We are building the biggest San Diego Padres independent network. Right after that, tonight, Adam Glick went live on the San Diego Padres watch party. Was absolutely big time tonight. He was fantastic. And of course, right now, none other. The number one San Diego Padres postgame show in San Diego brought to you by yours truly, the Hog Watch. Okay? That was the story tonight. Thank you so much for the $5 donation. This team is trash. You don't trade Snell or Hater at the trade deadline to get anything. Born to go back for the Chargers. Padres are a dumpster fire. I, I, you know, I'd like to cover the Chargers, but I will get absolutely uh, just screwed on the internet if I do that. Um, and, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, it's ridiculous you don't trade Snell and Hater. To be fair, it's probably Peter Seidler saying that you don't do that. Um, it's probably saying that you don't delete that. Uh, one second. So it is what it is. Um, it is what it is. That That's kind of why Steve says Glick's the best. That's awesome. Uh, Hog, I said that last year after watching him driving 59 runs. So Padres fans, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being really concerned. How concerned are you about this baseball team? Now, it's hard to not overreact. Um, it's hard to not overreact. Um, but it is early. They're 3 and 5. But I don't think this Cardinals team is that good. I really don't think this Cardinals team is that good. <sighs> this team's fucked. Yeah, it feel it definitely feels like the same story as last year. It definitely feels like the same story as last year. We'll have ADHD and some others join in Discord. We'll have ADHD join. Um, do you guys do you guys want ADHD to join? Do you guys want ADHD to join again or no? You get you guys let me know. It's really it's really up to you guys. I, I mean I, I'm down for I'm down I'm down for a very long stream tonight. 
I just don't really know what to say right now. Um, do you guys want to do a little thing on Fernando? Um, his at-bats suck, okay? And one of his hits, uh, he thought it was a fly-out. It's just everyone. It, everyone uh, it, it, it's kind of bad. Uh, cards are a better team, less talent, if that makes sense. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I really don't know if that's the case. Um, standing ovation for X, we can fix him. A stand, you think a standing ovation for Bogarts fixes him? Uh, yeah, it, it's not looking good right now. It, it's not looking good right now, dude. <sighs> Let's take a look at the San Diego Padres box score tonight. We take a look at this team. Nine hits to six, one error. I think the campy thing was an error. When your top four is going three for 15, that ain't going to do it. Uh, Tatis had two hits. They were all kind of bullshit hits, uh, to be honest with you. Machado uh, looked pathetic at the plate tonight. Cronenworth got screwed out of that double play um, and all that stuff. Uh Yeah, Merrill's going to be really good, okay? Jackson Merrill is going to be really good. But, but like, come on. Like, if that's the biggest thing that we are excited about, uh, then what is there to do? And honestly, I, the reason I feel like I don't have many words is because I just think the team isn't that good. <laughs> I just don't think we're that good of a team. And that's kind of why I'm just like, I don't know. I, I yeah, he had one nice hit today. He had one nice hit today. The other was lucky. Why do we hold Tatis to a higher standard than Manny? Uh, because Fernando is a better player than Manny. Manny should be the least of our worries, okay? Manny checks out for one day and then is awesome the next. Like, you take what you can with Manny Machado. But that exactly, okay? Okay. ADHD put it best. We aren't that good. We need to just embrace the youth. That's the harsh reality. Okay? Right now, it seems like this team isn't that good. And people are saying, why is Tatis held to a higher standard than Manny Machado? Fernando Tatis Jr. has a career OPS of 975. I mean, that's why Manny has a career OPS of 820. So two different levels, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Yankee Kyle. I had no idea. I'm going to talk about my play for the Padres tomorrow. So let's give a shout out to our sponsor. Bet US. Bet US, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. Bet US, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with All right, guys. So when I take a look at the San Diego Padres tomorrow. As a betting man, and guys, go to BetUS, link in the description. You get 125% deposit match up to your first three deposits up to $2,500, 24-7 gamblers insurance, 24-7 customer service. It's where I've been making all my money so far on the betting year. I'm not going to lie. I don't think the Potters are good, but I do think they get a bounce back outing from Joe Musgrove tomorrow, and I think they salvage the series. I'm taking the Padres run line. I'll put 50 bucks on it. 50 to win, 72 50. I think the Padres do win tomorrow. I think they win by multiple runs. And I just think it's because they are going to bounce back and, and at least salvage the series. So, guys, go to BetUS. Link is in the description. It's pinned on top of the chat. You get 125% deposit match up to your first three deposits up to $2,500. So, if you put $1,000, they will actually give you $2,250 to play with. Embrace the youth, embrace betting on the pod race tomorrow, and tail with me. Shout out BetUS. All right, man, let's have ADHD joining into the show. I want to get his thoughts on everything. I want to get his thoughts related to the San Diego Potters and all that stuff. ADHD, can you hear me? ADHD, can you hear me, bro? 
If he doesn't, then I guess so be it. Um, I, I, I guess if he doesn't, so be it. 50 to 172. Ipe uses this? Nah, Ipe. I'll bet US. I, I think All right, man. Uses, ADHD, ADHD, I can hear you, joining into the show. I want to get his thoughts on anything. I want to get his thoughts related to the San Diego Potters and all that stuff. ADHD, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, do you hear me? ADHD, I can, hear you. can you hear me, bro? Bro, your shit's If fucked. he doesn't, then I guess Dude, so Dude, no, it. yours um, is. I, I, I guess if he doesn't, so be it. Wait, why do I hear my own 50 stream? to 172. Ipe uses this? Nah, Ipe. Uh, chat, chat, why do I hear my own stream? Oh, I'm good. You got me, ADHD? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I got you. What's up, man? Give, 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 give us your thoughts on tonight's uh, on tonight's great game. This feels like the same as last year, dude. Like, the team is just... Uh, I don't know, man. They're mid, bro. Like, yeah, there's the, the that Ryan Payne guy on Twitter made a really good point, dude. Like, the player is just like, we don't ever streak. We don't ever have winning streaks. We don't ever have players that have, like, four to five game, like, just demolishing hitting streaks. We don't ever have pitchers that have, like, three to four outings in a row, like, you know, like, consecutively. Like, bro, like, that's what wins you multiple games in a row. And the, and the Padres just never do that. Like, we'll have, like, an offensive explosion where we'll score, like, 11 runs. And then, like, the next two games, we'll, we'll, we'll score, like, three runs while giving up six or seven. And also, like, we've, we've just given up way too many runs this year so far, like, per game. I mean, you Darvish, you Darvish was great tonight. Um, yeah, I want to I want to spend some time because I honestly don't know. Last night I was saying I'm not that worried about the offense. You know, it, it, it's it's pretty hard to um, what's the word? Not overreact. It is very hard. I mean, it's very hard. Uh, Miles Mikolas guys last year wasn't even that good. And he's their ace and he's able to go six innings and only allow two runs. They get seven hits off him, but they're not able to do anything about it. How awful is that Xander Bogart's contract looking? I mean, how fucked does that one look? I mean, so we paid two hundred and eighty million dollars in, in in today's game. If you pay two hundred eighty million dollars for a guy who's never going to hit more than twenty homers and is going to hit like two seventy, it's basically become a single hitter with like a few doubles thrown in there. Like it's it's going to age horribly. It's already horrible. It's I mean it's ridiculous. Like Xander Bogarts is worth like a hundred and seventy million. Maybe if even 150, even. 150 million, maybe. I mean, yeah. he, hasn't even, he hasn't even proven that. And guys, I don't know if you remember, but I think the report was that Xander didn't even get a contract offer above $200 million in his free agency. Nope. It was yep. the Padres that felt like that they couldn't get him to leave Boston unless they paid like an in, in in exorbitant yep. overpay. And they did just that. Uh, Bro, they, do you do you think, yeah, do you think Xander, like, wanted to leave Boston no. where he is literally but, loved? But, but, Bro, but, but, but the question no, is, yeah. how, do you not, how do you not leave Boston if you're getting $100 million more elsewhere? Exactly. Like, bro, no other team was offering him more than $180 million, which is what Boston offered him. And then we paid him $280 million. I did. Mean, how can you say no to that? He, he had already won two championships. Like, he's not going to go down as a failure in terms of, like, you know, like how some players just never win. You know, like, he, so he's like, screw it. I'm going to take the money and go to San Diego. I don't care if our teams are bad. I don't care if I'm aging horribly. I don't care if I'm not the same hater as I was. Like, I got all this. I got paid, baby. Overall, yes. I got, I got paid. Don't right talk right for a sec. Let's listen to you know, Mike Show. always want to be able to string things together. I haven't looked at the – and it's a little early, but it is, you know, an indicator of where we are in the league relative to what we're doing in a lot of different areas. and. A lot of different areas that, you know, we wanted to pay attention to and be better at, we are. Um, you know, we'd like to continue to, you know, be hitting 400 with our underscore position. But I feel like the approach in there, the intense there, I've yet to see a guy take a bat off. I disagree with that. Yeah, me too. The, the, the approach in there, I have yet to see a guy take an at-bat off. I thought Manny Machado took every single fucking at-bat off tonight. Did you not? Like, I mean, I, I mean, it's it's hard with Manny because like his body language is bad. Like when he's not I going well, so, like it feels like it. Bats. He had one good hit. Xander's at bats were pathetic. I thought Manny had awful at bats. I thought Cronenworth had really good at bats tonight. I thought Cronenworth had, has had 
been really good all year. He's probably been their best offensive out. player this year, guys. Oh, uh, not even close. It's not close. It's been Chrono World. Not okay, close. Let's, let's listen to the rest of Schilt. And I've yet to see somebody that really hasn't had the right approach to what they're doing relative to the situation, maybe in a bat or two um, here or there. But, um, you know, overall, and that's the human side of this game. You know, um, they're, they're men, not machines. But overall, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. I mean, clear, clearly you'd like to have couple more on the on the good side of the column um, confident that's going to happen but I do like the way we're going about a lot of our business you know we get the pitch and roll and things start to sync up we'll, we'll roll off some some dubs in a, in a row Mike Schultz sounds confident he says you know we get the pitching going we roll up on sync off and we'll we'll get some dubs in a row maybe I'm being a bit too negative tonight I mean it's eight games into the year like what the, what else is the coach say right he's not and dude we're only we're two games under 500 like we've played some decent teams but like i want to play the rock you know like you know, i want to play the nationals like a lot of other yeah, well, teams we are we aren't guys, for a while so. we aren't for i know a while. uh so that's why like if we we just need to like if we can somehow just stay a game or two under 500 like through april that would be a miracle i'd be very happy with that i mean yeah but i mean it's tough i mean you 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 need a win tomorrow because then you then you play three in San Francisco. Um, they- Listen, man, uh, you're our, you want to win multiple games, bro. Like your top four, like your top five, your stars have to hit. Like they have to hit consistently. and They have to hit more than singles. Like we need doubles. We need home runs and like not in in trash time. Like we need home runs like when they matter doubles like the, dude the team has had this problem forever especially in april especially at petco like in 2021 and 2022 we won so many games by like one or two runs like three to two four to two you know like two to one at petco because our pitching was just nails but we don't have that pitch uh steve here. says the bullpen is so what far. uh yeah, I mean, I thought obviously Matsui was pretty bad tonight. It was his first bad outing of the year, though. It just kind of came at a brutal time. Um, yeah, I mean, not much to say about Matsui. He just didn't have it tonight, uh, and that's okay, right? And 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 and, and, and that's truly just okay. Um, he his command was completely off, uh, but he's been really good uh, for the Padres this year. So I'm not, I'm not too worried about him so far. Wandy Peralta looked really good in terms of mitigating the damage out there. He kind of got screwed by Campusano, uh, not touching home plate. And then uh, Avila looks good. The, the 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 pen looks really good. Those two, those other runs were unearned runs. Uh, well, one of them was unearned by Matsui. Let's watch the DSG. See, no one asked for this post game show. Uh, awful, 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 terrible. Any bad word you could think of, I'm not going to say them because I say enough bad words already. Uh, Pods lose 5-2. to two. You Darvish threw an absolutely incredible game. One bad pitch. And this lineup is just feeble as shit, man. Just 2023 pods all over again. I'm trying to keep optimistic, but nothing has shown me that this team's any different. Uh, and he's usually super optimistic. You know, I'm going to keep the faith. <laughs> yeah. I'll wake up tomorrow. I'll be ready for the game. I'll be like, let's go yeah, pods. Um, but you watch like, this game. You're like, not- what the fuck, man? Like, come on. Xander Bogarts, brother. <laughs> be better at baseball, please. Just be better <laughs> at baseball. You get paid so much DSG fucking money. You hear what he said? Like that yeah, Jake Cronenworth definitely. single up. Or that's, that was a good piece, man. That just is tough tickets. But. Xander, Manny, just fucking feeble at bats tonight. Campy's my dog, but he didn't even fucking touch home plate. Chef Yuki looked like shit. <laughs> just three and five to start the year. Long season, whatever, dude. Every game counts when you're fighting for a wild card spot in April, bro. I'm I'm bummed. Bro, how does Darvish look so good? Which is crazy. He's 37, dude. You know, it's crazy. That was probably the contract we shat on the most, and it, and it may it may end up being okay, his contract. I mean, we'll we'll, we'll find out. But, you know, exactly. What, when, when Mike Schilt's saying, you know, we thought all these guys had competitive at-bats, bull fucking shit. Go watch, go watch your, your leadoff and your cleanup hitters at-bats tonight. Probably the two most important positions in your, in your lineup. They were the most feeble at-bats. What do you mean? Yeah. I think I think Kim should be leading off 
I think he found a spot at leadoff last year and he thrived in it. I don't like, I know like potentially hitting Xander fifth or even six, like it might not be okay with him, but dude, like Kim was a really good leadoff hitter last year. I like, I think people forget like how good he was, you know, like he gets on base more than Xander. He takes walks more than Xander. Like he, he's faster than Xander. Um, it's uh, yeah. I just I really would like Kim to lead off, especially against the, lefties, the, the, but also the, against the righties. Issue is this though, the issue is the, I, in chat. I want to hear your guys' chat. Let me know your thoughts. I don't feel like there's a place to play. There's there's not a place to hit Xander Bogarts if he's not leading off. That's the issue. Like I don't know where you can play him. Uh, and you did that to yourself by giving a guy you didn't need all that money. Um, Josh, thank you so much for the $5. We're not asking for 100 wins. We're asking for this team to at least be competitive and beat crap teams. Not so much to ask for. I'm asking this team to go 6-5 and five every 11 games. That's all. Go 6-5 and five every 11 games. Not not go 7-4, and 8-3 and three every 11 games. Then you're going to be the Dodgers. Uh, but Josh, thank you so much for the donation, guys. Donations are all answered first, so we really appreciate it. All you guys supporting to the channel. Donating again. Padres lose 5-2. to two. They actually out-hit the Cardinals 9-6. to six. They do have that crucial error from Luis Campisano, which was an absolute backbreaker. Really, you know, did, did, you know, defeating any sort of rally spark plug that was going to potentially ensue from the San Diego Padres. Guys, make sure you follow me on Twitter at the Hog Watch. We have 8HG joining us. I think some of the biggest takeaways is that the Padres, they have some very, very massive flaws. The question is where? The question is where do you want to start? Is it their inconsistent offense? Is it their it's inconsistent 1-4? No to Is it their awful starting pitching? Has it been their very underwhelming bullpen, which we all thought agreeing coming into the season would be the team's biggest strength? And arguably, it's been one of the weaknesses of this team. But quite frankly, there's weaknesses in all three phases of that of, our, of this baseball team. And when there's weaknesses in all three phases, what does that equate to? That equates to you being a not a good baseball team. And it's only eight games, but that's the takeaway so far. ADHD. Other than Suarez, like, does anyone really know what their role is in the bullpen? Like, I think that's a, another thing, too. It's like no one really has any role. Like, other than Brito, I guess, like, is, like, our long guy right now. He should be our fifth starter, but that's an, another conversation. But like, again, like, when you don't really know what your role is, you, you just always have to be ready to come in. Like, if they need you in the fifth, sixth, seventh, uh, yeah, like – Again, like no one really has a role, right? Other than Suarez is the closer. So, like, yeah, I think that potentially leads to some, uh, especially like early in the season. Um, but I mean, yeah, dude, we're just not consistent. Uh, not a lot of clutch hitting. What the Cardinals did tonight, what the Padres need. Thanks for right? the donation. You get down, guys. you get down a run or two, you get a really big hit. They got a really big hit from Contreras, dude. They gave him the lead. Tack on a few runs, you win the game. It's really not that complicated. The yeah, Padres this, could easily this do Giants that. Giants Dodgers like, game is really good. Yeah, yeah. The, I feel like the Giants are going to be what we were in twenty two. At least that's the vibe I get. There. I mean, guys, it's so early in the season, but can't you already tell which teams are going to be good? Like, you can't, ADC, can't, is it too crazy to say that? Like, I know the Giants are going to be yeah, right there bit. for the playoffs. All right. I, I know. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, the Giants were always right there, right? They're, I mean, they're never great, but they're never bad. It's just a good, it's a well-run organization, and when you have that, you're just always there. It's kind of like the Rays, you know, like they're just always going to be there. Um, Anyways, yeah, guys, take a look at the St. Louis Cardinals hitting stats today. Donovan, two for four. That's how you get production from the leadoff guy who gets on base three times. And when your leadoff guy gets on base three times, you don't even need Goldie and these guys to be even, you know, that great. Wilson Contreras hit the two-run nuke off Darvish. People say it was a bad pitch by Darvish. I don't even think it was that bad of a pitch. It wasn't a bad pitch, bro. Like, Contreras just, like, again, like, He's homers happen. You just hope that, you know, that, that big homer doesn't happen when the when your guy's having a bad start. But, dude, what's the, what's the one thing that you use? Uh, you know, his downfall has been even in great years for him. He always gives up the random like one or two home runs, yeah, you know, like in fine. pretty much every like, start. He was good enough. Again, it's just, yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying like that's, you know, that's what happened. And like, again, dude, listen, our stars have to hit. Have to hit like consistently. Quick you can't question. just hit like once guys, every three days. Did you guys like Mike Winters on TV tonight? 
uh, the former umpire. Uh, I'm curious. I'm curious to hear 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 that. Um, Captain, thanks, Captain Coke. Thanks for the ten. And take a look at the Cardinals pitching. I think the Padres are a 500 team. Yeah, right now that sounds a little bit optimistic. Uh, seriously, uh, like last season, I like that you're passionate and real. You don't bullshit. I respect that. Go back to the Chargers. We need you. Good guest, by the way. Truth. Uh, they're talking about you, ADHD. I will. I will support the Chargers. I just will support them not publicly because you guys like to destroy me about it, and I don't have the time to cover them. I don't have the time to cover them, and my heart is still in San Diego. Way to be transparent. I'll support them, but not. So I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like I, I'll support the team. Are you kidding me? Every Sunday with Jim fucking Harbaugh Hell on the yeah. sidelines. Are you kidding? It's me? gonna be based. I'm it's so excited. So based. <laughs> I'm so- <laughs> yeah. I'm way more excited about that than the Padres. Are you kidding me? But I mean, yeah. it, it, even if we have no wide receivers, and, 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 and right now, guys, it seemed like it seems like the Padres' peak is done. It seemed like 22 and 23 kind of were like the peak. Relax, just maybe. I mean, dude, again, bro, like, like you're basically <laughs> saying like the mountain is falling. Out. And we're eight games into the year. I no, mean, I like, no, I don't no, but, but know. I Come on. Reading, but I was reading an article how, like, the majority of the spending was with Seidler, and, like, the lack of spending this year is not to reset the luxury tax. It's legitimately, like, they're not going to spend. Uh, well, I mean, may, like, may, I wait, think wait, 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 really quick. Also, somebody in the chat just said, I don't know if you guys understand Xander Bogarts' contract. Bring X off the bench, bench him. Guys, let me show Bro. you. Let me <laughs> When's the last time you benched a three hundred eighty million yeah, dollar yeah, yeah. player? You guys want to look at Xander Bogarts' contract? <laughs> Let's have some fun together right now. Take a look. He is under contract until he is forty-one years old. Okay. Xander's thirty-one years old. He is owed no opt-outs, no nothing. Twenty-five million dollars a year. Every single year for the next decade. That is, <laughs> look at this contract. For a guy that's never going to hit 20 homers. And he'll probably end up with, you know, he might hit between 260 to 280, depending on the year. And give you a lot of singles and some doubles. That's it. That, that, and and play decent second base. He's already a second baseman. We're paying a second baseman two hundred and eighty million dollars. Who's not Jose Altuve? Good for Xander. I I, I would I would have I would have left I would have left I would have left Boston. Oh, he too. fleeced us. He fleeced us so bad. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? I would have ran out of Boston. I don't give a. Fu- I won my two World Series. And why do you think there's not a lot of backlash from the Red Sox organization or fans exactly. about losing X? Because they're like, oh, shit. He got that much? Yeah, we love you, X. But Dude, people are saying Hosmer. Uh, no, this is way worse than Hosmer. Like, this is like, the, like you think Hosmer was bad? Like, this is going to turn out to be, like, probably top five worst contracts in the history of baseball, like, when it's all said and done. Yeah, and I, and I think, uh, I think, he needs to start juicing. I am I? No, because then he doesn't get his bag, dude. He's here for his bag. He doesn't care about baseball anymore. He already won two championships. Fernando needs yeah. to start juicing, man. I need the I need those gappers. Where are those gappers? I don't think they do. I don't think they test for HGH in in baseball, right? Oh, get Nando should get back on the get back on the ringworm, bro. He, Someone said Xander bent Preller over and threw out the Vaseline. <laughs> Ron Fowler is still on the board and has a lot of influence. He's pissed about the way things are. Ron F- Ron Fowler had zero spending authority once Scyther came into charge. That's just bullshit. Um, Hosmer was a bad contract. It was a bad contract. But Hosmer at least like gave us a few good years where he got like hit okay. Um, and they Bro, gave- you remember Hosmer in April? Yeah, like every year, and they he gave, was amazing. And they gave Hosmer like an eight-year deal when he was twenty-eight. They gave Xander an eleven-year deal when he was thirty. So like, eleven years. By the way, Xander uh, got I think so a seven-year offer at most. Um, fun fact: the Angels are hitting two hundred one with a two seventy OBP. 
their pitchers have the second worst earned run average in the AL, and their leadoff man is 0 for 20, and they are first place in the AL West. That's actually hilarious. That's crazy, Big Dave. Maybe Tatis can give X the juice. Uh, I don't want to make any more Tatis juice jokes. I really hope the kid's good. But again, uh, I mean, he's but, been, honestly like I know we rag on Tatis a lot for all work, but like he's been he's been pretty good so far. He's been okay. No, he's been yes. okay. He's been okay. Stop he's been looking okay. at the numbers. Stop looking at the numbers. You're better. Th- you're better than looking at the numbers. Bro, saying he's it's hard. Great. But again, but but we're eight games in. So like, I don't know what else you want me to look at. It's it's hard to it's hard. If we're eight games in, it's hard to look at peripheral. Say, but then you can't say Xander can be the worst contract in MLB history. Then like, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Like, we're just talking about what we've seen so far. Like, that's what our job is. Yeah, but we saw Xander all last. Right too, and he wasn't worth two hundred eighty million. Not and even Fernando, close last and year. Fernando wasn't no. worth two hundred million last year. No, but he was coming off injuries, hadn't seen baseball for a year. So like last year, I think we all gave Nando like, you know, a, a respectable pass. But like obviously, you know, he's not going to get that pass going forward. Manny deserves this contract. Uh, I don't think. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, with the Manny stuff, I would have called his bluff and let him opt out. Um, but Peter Seidler just gave him the money. Um, but I don't think anyone was giving Manny this kind of contract. But he did. But he was coming off a really, really good year. So it was kind of like fuck. Like you hope he doesn't opt out because he was coming off a really, really good year. So yeah, it is what it is. Um, I I'm fine with the 11 year Manny contract, but I wasn't fine with both. With that, you can't do X. both. You can't yeah. do both because both of those are going to age like milk in like twenty eight. And it also stops you from signing other like potential like really good pitchers or players. Like again, like the Padres don't have three hundred million dollars to spend. Guys, We're not guys, that team. Guys, if the Padres aren't a good team with these guys in their prime, could you imagine how bad they're going to be in a few years? Um, good point. Audrey says it is the worst contract ever. Manny's is also bad. Please address Joe Musgrove. Love him to death, but I'm worried. I'm like, let's he's pitching tomorrow. Let, let let's talk about them tomorrow. You know, like Joe was. I think really, Joe will figure it Joe, out. Uh, Joe was really good last year before he got hurt. Joe is. Why would really Joe good. just automatically lose? It, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, well, I don't know why like, he's worried about yeah. Joe Musgrove. He has been yeah. so good as a Padre. He really has. Like that that contract they gave him has been. Really worth it so far. Take a look at Musgrove's numbers, guys. In 2021 for the San Diego Padres, he was an 11, he was an 11 and nine with a 3.18 ERA. In 2022, he was 10 and seven with a 2.93 ERA. In 2023, <laughs> he was years. 10 and three. Yeah. In 2023, he was 10 and three before he got hurt with a 3.05 ERA. If you're taking a look at his contract from a contractual perspective, 20 million AAV is a bargain crazy it's crazy it's just crazy so, like so for crazy you guys good to money. be really worried about two starts is is being ignorant okay let's not be worried about joe musgrove let's be worried not about the pitcher who has a 20 million aav in the prime of his career who's averaged a 3.06 era and over 400 innings pitched for the san diego padres excuse me over 460 innings pitch rather let's be worried about the 31 year old we gave 280 million dollars who only hit singles and will hit 270 at the prime of his career be worried about that okay we can get worried about Joe Musgrove if he has 10 fucking starts that are awful. But he, his sample size as a Padre has been so robust. Be worried about the I guys take... who haven't been good for us. Sorry. Dude, I mean, dude, Joe takes care of himself more than anyone else throughout the offseason, takes care of other guys. Um,. If there's one pitcher on the team, I'm definitely not worried about. Like uh, throughout the long term, it's it's him. I mean, yes, he's been absolutely awful. Something was clearly off with his mechanic, you know, in spring training in Korea and so far. But he'll figure it out. K says, "Sorry, I don't agree with Cronenworth's contract either." Well, you can disagree with the 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 timing of it. I think the money is if he's playing like this. It'll be good. But yes, when somebody has three years of club control, it doesn't make sense to give them an extension. Uh, there's no there's no emotions in sports. It seemed like Peter Seidler was emotional about it. 
um, maybe feeling bad that somebody who was that good would be into their early 30s making $500,000 a year. So he got emotionally pitied into giving him that extension when he still had club control. Peter Seidler agency would 100% be the guy who would do that, right? Yeah, I mean, like, dude, like every single person watching you to realize that a lot of these contracts, a lot of these decisions happen because Peter Seidler, unfortunately, knew in his heart that he was passing and he was going to do anything in his power to try and win a ring before that happened, like not thinking of the long-term issues that may come with those contracts. And, and, and like, by the way, that's, guys, that, and, that's just what happened. And, and by the way, guys, I want, I want to let you know this. If I owned a team, which I never will because I'll never be that rich enough, maybe one day. Fuck it. Yes, I will. When I own a team one day, and if I'm however old I am, he was too young when we lost him, but I knew that I was passing away in the next one fucking year. My money is only as valuable as how long I'm able to use it. Of yep. course, I will absolutely not give a shit about how the team is once I leave the earth. Selfishly, the team that I own, I 100% want to win it all. So I'm not blaming like Preller on the Bogarts contract. I'm not blaming like, I guess, Seidler. It's just a shitty situation. Our owner. And, a, yeah. And if we're being honest, we had some pretty good, good teams on paper in 2021 in 2022 and obviously last year too but go correctly but Seidler put a very nice, nice team three very nice teams together back to back to back and we just i mean 2022 yeah, happened dude. obviously and then uh, but i mean again we just, it's hard to win it all dude only one team does, bro. It's hard to get to the World Series. Pod Padres lover says, born and nor this fat guy talking, have ever played competitive baseball. Very kind of you. Machado is worth that contract. Tatis is worth his contract. Bogart's overpaid. Cronenworth overpaid. So you're telling me Manny Machado uh, is worth 16 years, $530 million? Um, maybe. He very well could be. Um and if you actually watch the channel Potter's Lover and didn't come and hate on me and my friends, I've always told you that I am the least worried about Manny Machado. Don't I say that every night at ADHD? I always say, like, yeah. if Manny Machado is your biggest worry, you don't know baseball. Um, if you take a look at the back of his baseball card, every single year he's Mr. Consistent. Mr. Consistent. So, so first of all, learn who you're watching before you attack them. Number one. Number two, with Fernando Tatis Jr., how is that contract worth it when you haven't gotten even three years of him playing on it, number one? And number two, it's a guy who's endured five surgeries. And number three, he had a 770 OPS last year as a 25-year-old, making $340 million. It has a chance to be worth it, but is it worth it right now? The answer is no. Put your bias, put your emotions aside, and watch the fucking game in a realistic lens like all of us. Should we extend Kim? No, because they don't have the money to extend him. So what they need to do is trade him at the deadline. But what's going to happen? They're going to be three games under 500. They're going to trick themselves into thinking that they can make a run, and they're going to keep him, and they're going to lose him for nothing. Welcome to the Hogwatch in 2024. Touche, dude. I don't have much else to, uh, to say, agree? man. They, 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 they need to move Kim. Also, he overperformed last year. Sorry, I'm going to say it. Well, let's see what I can, bro. Like, maybe Kim overperformed, maybe he did it again. Like, I want him leading off. But um, if the Padres are out of it at the deadline, Kim 100% has to be traded. It's yeah, not even they're not off. going to move him, bro. Oh, how good, like, does we John, have... how good does Jung Hoo Lee look, bro? Unbelievable. Could you imagine yeah. if we signed him? Well, I mean, like, dude, having him at, like, Merrill and left field. Him, and Lee in center field, man, that's a, uh, yeah, bro. It just lengthens your lineup out like crazy. Uh, again, guys, take a look at the Potters hitting stats. Guess what? It's the bottom of their order that's been carrying them all year long. Five out of their nine hits came from the bottom of their order. Tyler Wade had a hit. Jackson Merrill had a hit. Luis Campusano had three hits. 
Okay. Fernando had two. Camposano is going to be an all star, brother. Who? Camposano is going to be an all star. Yeah, he's just not a good catcher at times. No, but it doesn't matter. He'll be an all star because he hits really well for a catcher. You think you think he'll be an all star this year? Oh yeah, absolutely. I I I'll, I I I I bet anyone like sixty bucks on it right now. <laughs> you have a bet deal fifty bucks. Fifty bucks? Yeah, let's do it. I'm done. All right, deal. Um, Pick. I just think that that I I think it's going to be Will Smith, and then there'll be one other catcher, right? In the National League, it'll for sure be Will Smith. Uh, uh yeah, possibly, probably, so but we'll again, like we'll see. Well, I think the Campy thing's really good. Knowing, uh, number one, it's pretty cool that he's homegrown. But number two, I think it's great that he's going to be their DH when Salas is ready. Campusano was somebody who's such a good bat that you don't want him to do anything else. He's kind of like a lazy, like, I don't know, like, good for him for being a catcher. But, like, he's the kind of guy that would be more than happy just being a DH for the rest of his career, sitting on the bench and just having four to five quality at-bats a game. That'd be great. Um, 100%. And I think that's who he is. And, and and he's a World Series caliber DH to have on your baseball team, right? I think when you look at this team from a position-by-position position basis, you have to look at, like, what are World Series caliber positions? He's a World Series caliber DH. We'll see. Um, I swear to God, though, even though we're pitching, even though we're facing a lefty tomorrow, if they sit Merrill and if they don't play Pauly, like, I want these guys to work through – Work through hitting against the same side pitching. We should not be platooning Merrill. I want him. He should be an everyday center fielder, meaning he hits lefties and righties. I don't want Merrill to sit tomorrow just because we're facing a lefty who has an eight, eight ERA. Like Polly, also, like, dude, I would have Polly in the lineup every day if it was up to me. But, um, again, like Tyler Wade has been really good. So it's, you know, obviously it's. They're probably going to keep hitting him um, until he starts to, you know, go back to his 500 career OPS or whatever it is. Um, All right, AHC. Appreciate you, bro. GG. Let's go win. Let's go score 12 runs tomorrow. Guys, let's go score 12 runs tomorrow. And I want to have a few more closing remarks. First, a shout out to our sponsor, Manta Sleep. Guys, go to mantasleep.com. Again, link is pinned in the YouTube chat. And what you can do, guys, this is my Manta Mask Sound. It is the number one sleep mask in the game. It is the best sleep mask on the market. If you go to mantasleep.com and you use code HOG for 10% off, you can get any Manta Mask. I was telling you guys on my stream on Sunday that my favorite Manta Mask is the Manta Mask Pro. But, but. If I'm laying around on a lazy day and I want to just catch a good podcast or I want to take a day nap, I use the Manta Mask Sound. That thing is an absolute beast. It is a freaking monster. I freaking love it to death. It's the Manta Mask Sound. Go to mantasleep.com. Use code HOG for 10% off. It has slidable speakers right here that you can literally play me on if you want to go to sleep with on both sides. It's an amazing sleep mask. Go to mantasleep.com. And use code HOG for 10% off. Guys, besides that, that's really it for me on today's show. Appreciate all you guys.